Hello everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Ethan and Ethan Show. From here, we're going to set up your CC3D flight controller. Now there's two things that you need to download before you do this. This is mainly for the people on Amazon that I told I'd make a video for after I received my flight controller. And I literally just received it, I slept till 1 o'clock, and it was already there, so it was nice to wake up and get this done. Now there's you know, quite a few issues that you run at setting this up most likely. Um, just repeat some of the steps that I've done a couple of times before you think it's not going to work. But from here, I'm going to go to the two things you need to download before getting started. So first is LibrePilot, which is the software you set up. I'll have this link down in the description for you in the video. So from here, you're going to go to download on the main website. And once this loads in, because my slow internet, am I right? And you're going to click on the download right here for whatever version operating system that you run. And I'm on OS X, so I'm going to download this one. I've already got it downloaded, and it's super easy to set up. Not that hard to do. Just any other classic Macintosh setup. But on Windows, it's a little bit different. And during that setup, you'll be prompted to click these boxes to download this software. I assure you, it's not adware or anything like that. Check all those boxes because that's important software that will allow LibrePilot to communicate with your flight controller. So from there, you're going to open up LibrePilot and go to firmware. And from here, I'll put in another clip that I already recorded on all that. So there we go. Just gonna edit that down. Alright, from here, after you've plugged in your flight controller and got it all set up, click on rescue, unplug your flight controller from your computer, and then it'll tell you to plug it back in and plug it back in. Now click open, go to your downloads or wherever your downloads would be if you're on Windows, which is a folder just like this one. Now you want to open this software in here. Now click flash. This may take a second, but that's normal. If it doesn't work the first time, just restart Libre Pilot and try again. If it does, if it continues to not work from there, then I recommend that you leave a comment on my video and I'll try to help you to the best of my ability. Anyways, from here, if you guys didn't see what I did there, I've been having some issues here myself with drivers and all kinds of things. I had to switch out cables because my mini USB cable apparently was broken and it was being weird. I couldn't get it to stay connected. So now from this point, you've upgraded your board with firmware. may not be the latest firmware, but that's not as important. So, click erase settings. That looks pretty finished there. Close out with Red Pilot. Reopen it. Now if this all lights up down here and says USB copier control or something like that, then you've successfully gotten your board to connect to Libre Pilot. So from here, your quad, plane, car, whatever the heck you're putting a flight controller on, now is able to work with Librate Pilots. So click the vehicle setup wizard right there, and click next from here, and upgrade. Now bootloader mode basically lets you put software, such as the Librate Pilot software, onto your board. So if this all happens, then everything's going right. Now Librate Pilot's a bit glitchy, so when you put this software on here, the way I did, earlier, basically there's going to be issues sometimes and it won't work every single time. That's okay, you're going to have to keep retrying and it's a pain. It honestly is annoying, I know the pain guys, but if this doesn't solve your issue, remember you can leave a comment down below and I can help you explore that issue, because I'm literally god of CC3Ds because I own a whole bunch of them, and one of them I completely fried using a 
FPV camera, I'd rather not get into that. Because the receiver actually blows. Alright, so from here, after you've, up after you've uploaded your software, click next. And if this all pops up, and it says disconnect, and it looks like everything's connected here, you can click next again. <laughs> so it's restarting your flight controller, so this may take a minute, as it says on screen. Not that hard. Alright, now, this part, if you don't know anything about your connection to your receiver, can be a bit confusing. Basically, what I'm using is PWM, and this is basically, on your receiver, there's you know, three metal pins per channel on your receiver. I have a cable plugged into every single one of my um, channels. Now, this is kind of a dumb way to do it. It takes up a lot of cableage, I guess you could say. But uh, there's all kinds of different ways you can do this. But if you have a cable, one per every channel, then you're doing PWA. If you know about your receiver, then I'm sure you'll be able to do this. So now it's adding that setting. So this will take a second. Alright, now, depending on what kind of vehicle you have, if you have a plane, then you want fixed wing. If you have a helicopter, click that. If you have a car, click this one. And if you don't, if you guys are probably wondering why would you need a flight controller on a car, if you don't know anything about RC cars, they don't always drive straight. And so putting a flight controller on them will actually keep your tires aligned completely straight forward so they can go fast. And so it's kind of a nice luxury, but. CC3D would be good for that because they're cheap and they work really well. When they came out, they were like $80 a pop, but now they're like 17 bucks on Amazon. So, welcome to a discontinued company. So from here, after you have your vehicle selected, you can click next and all that. This will show you the connection diagram of your receiver, your flight controller, and all your ESCs on your drone or whatever vehicle you've selected. So I'm setting up my racing drone. So make sure your ESC cables are in the right spot. And you don't really have to follow this because you'll do uh, transmitter setup wizard, which will change all that up for you. So, if you want to save this diagram, if you ever need to look at it in the future, you know, when you're not around Liberty Pilot, whatever, you can go ahead and save that. But I don't need it because I have that all memorized. So now this will calculate your gyroscope and make sure that it's not in another universe and just on your desk flat somewhere. Yeah, make sure you have this on your desk flat somewhere. It doesn't have to be your desk, but it has to be level. So now click next, you don't have to select all that, just go next. Well before you go next actually, you might want to go ahead and grab your battery if you haven't already got one on standby. And hold on, I gotta get my Dean's adapter, I only have one, I lost one on. But um, you're just gonna plug in your battery now, and make sure everything works. My ESC's armed, so that's a good sign. So now, click next, next, and make sure, before you do this, please, if you're on a drone, or if you're with a car, make sure you lift your car up off your table. If you have a drone, take off all your props. If you have a plane, take off your prop, or props. I don't know what you're running, I'm not a genius, I can't see through you, but uh, make sure you don't have anything on there that will make it take off and hurt you or you know fly somewhere and break your stuff it's just so much easier if you just take your props off or you can hold your drone I guess but that's stupid anyways now from here basically just want to bring this up till a motor starts moving you want to get it to its minimal level there yeah I know my motors sound like they're brushed but I assure you they're brushless Now you basically want to get this as low as they can go without making your ESCs. Now I have crappy ESCs. I'm going to make up for it because they power my flight controller without me having to make my own connection on the power board. So I guess that's kind of nice, but they are still cheap. So I can't get that precise with power sometimes. Just get it to the best of your ability and you'll be fine. Alright, from here, you're going to basically select what your drone looks like. You don't have to do this, you can just press something random. But I have a Nighthawk style drone, so that's what I'm going to select. If you have a car or whatever, it'll it'll give you these options. <laughs> but, um, this will basically 
this just gives you some of the um, gives you some of the more heads up kind of things I guess I don't know really what the whole purpose of it is but it does something and I'm sure it's useful probably to tune your PIDs because if I'm guessing it says initial tuning so now click next and this will save all of your settings so now make sure that your uh, receiver is plugged into your drone and grab your remote or you know whatever vehicle you're running just plug in your receiver unless you're on a car and you don't have any settings really unless I, I don't know what you'd be doing exactly from here if you have a car but if you have a plane or a drone stay tuned with me now go to transmitter setup wizard and don't think you can just put your props back on yet it does disarm your drone but still so now you want to click next and I have acro style controller which basically looks like that but you got other stuff too I guess it also will look the same but it's, there's all kinds of stuff going on now you want to click next if you're running mode 2 that means that your throttle that makes you go up or down or if you're in a plane it gives you a throttle is on the left side your rudders which is your yaw your elevator and ailerons are on the right which means your pitch and your roll on the right side so you want mode 2, most people fly with mode 2 unless you're in another country. Now click next. Now you're basically going to follow the patterns it tells you to move with your sticks. And if this isn't working for you, I've had all kinds of issues with receivers before. And it's, it's all kinds of out of whack sometimes, I really can't explain it. Because I don't know myself what goes on with all this. But if it doesn't work, you can try restarting, whatever. It's a pain in the ass either way. Now click next. I don't have channels set up for all those, so I can't set any accessories. You don't have to, those are more of a luxury item, really. So now make sure you have everything centered. And just move everything around. Now if you see, this is supposed to display your controls right now, but it's not displaying the controls for me. I don't know why. You're just hanging with me. I've had all kinds of problems with Libre Pilot, and it's always going to be a pain in the ass software. So, you could use Betaflight or something, but I'd use Libre Pilot because it's easy, and I know how to use it because I've been using it for a long time. So, after you're pretty much ready to set this up, if your controls aren't being displayed live, um, just kind of guess on it, and if they don't work, if something's inverted, make sure you test if something's inverted once you get your vehicle flying, driving, whatever. Because if it's inverted, you gotta go back through this process and just invert that, whatever it was, and that'll change it and it'll work. So, I'm gonna click next, and yep, nothing, nothing Gucci happening here. Next. Now from here, you, if you're on a drone or a plane, and you don't have accessories or whatever, you want to click Always Armed, and go to this little timeout right here, and just get rid of that, and enter in a zero. And enter. From there, that means that you're always ready to take off. Uh, when you start up your device, it may not immediately just take off. You might have to move your thing up and down there to get that action going in. It, drones, or flight controllers, receivers, everything is just strange in this world. Oh. So now it's armed. So, there you go, your device is ready to go. From here, you've got all kinds of settings that you can change that you'll learn more about as you go on. And at first everything may seem confusing, but if you use your time wisely, and you look around on the internet, you will learn all kinds of amazing things. Just try not to learn all the amazing fake things as well. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, have a nice day.